What up, y'all? All right, so y'all know I'm just getting home, fresh from Baltimore. Got to be back on the road tonight just to get on to my show tomorrow in Pleasanton, California, live at Tommy T's. I cannot wait to see y'all Pleasanton. And let me tell y'all what something that was so interesting that just happened to me in Baltimore. First and foremost, Baltimore, thank y'all for showing up and showing out during Pride Weekend. Um, I had a lot of people come out, over 400 tickets sold. God is good. Um, the show was great. Woo Woo rocked out. Comedian Law, who hosted the show, he rocked out. I got up there and I end with a bang. God is great. It's a lot of merchandise. Y'all love my Pup Cup shirts. Um, you love the What Behoove Me Was shirts that was on my website for years. And just thank y'all for buying the merch, loving, supporting. My family came, my friends. It was just a lot of love in the building, as I told y'all before. But I also stayed after for comedian talent. Talent from New York, you know, it's just comedy. And I got a t-shirt from him after his show, too. So I'm supporting my guy today. Um, Ray Diva was on that show and Timmy Hall. It was just a great show. I'm so glad to see other comedy outside of my own. So thank you for that, Baltimore. But let's get into these BET Awards. <laughs> I said, what's going on on my screen? Need I mind y'all, I had just got back home. I decided to drive to Baltimore because I wanted to be able to get around and see all my family, my friends and stuff when I was there. So I decided to drive, and I live about four hours from B More now, so I had to come all the way back and, you know, get in just enough to watch the award show. And I got in. I was exuberantly tired. I can honestly admit that. But the award show was entertaining as hell. And I saw a lot of mixed reviews. People was like, I did not enjoy it, blah, blah, blah. That's because y'all be wanting people to do round spring, back off spring, round off full twist and layout. This ain't bring it on. This is BET. And what I saw at BET, it worked for me. Let's start with the outfits. I was just, <laughs> some of the red carpet looks, I didn't understand the theme this year. Was it come as you are? Because some of y'all just look like y'all shopped at Shein. I said, what is, what is this equipment you got on? It used to be a time when people was coming to a war show. You wore a sexy, elegant gown. Maybe something to show off your curves, accentuate the girls. Men had on a cute little suit, tie, nice little shoe, penny loafers. Now y'all go straight to Tamu and come the hell through. I said, what's going on with you? Some of y'all didn't even know who y'all was. Like the little girl Ice Spice. You know the one who looked like Annie? You know the one that everybody's saying is today's sex symbol? Stop playing she and her mood. Like, damn, she, first of all, I don't know what the child be talking about. I don't even think she know what she's talking about. But I said, look at little Annie. It looked like it was the hard knock life for her yesterday. She was sitting on the front row, got up there, did a little twerk, sung a little songs, got on off stage. I still didn't know who she was, but she looked good. Um, who, who else looked good at the awards uh, yesterday? Um... That girl, Coco Jones, she was the B, not BET, she was on Disney first. She got that beautiful love song. I loved her look last night. Um, I loved her performance. It was amazing. I love Busta Rhymes' performance last night. Busta just got up there and represented for New York. He represented for the hip-hop culture. Amazing. Now, his speech was a little long. Busta was the first person I've ever seen do an award speech, and they let him stay up there all shirty two minutes. Hell, that was half the award show. I said, why is Busta I took a nap, woke up, Buster was still accepting his award. Let's come on and bust. Save some for somebody else. And this won't the part that behooved me. What behooved me was when most people get up there and they go over their two minutes, they start to play that get your ass on off stage music. That doom, 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 doom. They ain't even play that. But see, I wouldn't have did it neither. Because if you look at Buster, even in his 50s, Buster still look like he work out. And a man that that tall and look like he work out would also knock you the fuck out. I would have been in that sound control booth. I would have been like MC Light. Don't you play that damn music. I don't want to argue with Buster when we get out of here now. You see him, man? <laughs> Looking like a damn transformer. But he got up there and he transformed. He woke the crowd up. It was dead. I ain't going to lie. Some of the performances was damn near dry. And I won't even hide. So I said, how did this get by? Because you know they give them a few weeks to put, you know, to practice this shit before they come. Some people was up there didn't look like they practiced. Like the girl Glorilla. Now, I like her music. I love G to the L to the O, Big Glow. But some dances ain't for you. When you're a girl that's my size, I like to call them the itty bitty bony bitch committee. When you're a EBT, a itty bitty bony, I just feel like it's other things you should do. If you are my size, trying to be sexy sometimes don't work. Just be cute. That's what I love about the 90s. You remember when there were girls that was my size out there? It would be like TLC, Aaliyah. They wore baggy pants with a bustier. That was sexy enough. All you had to do was do a little butterfly, move your arms. Oh, you could turn it out. Oh, you turn the party out with that move. 
Why? Who told Glorilla to get up there and twerk? I said, what that girl doing? And it looked like it hurt. When you my size and you twerking, that shit looked like it hurt. Because you ain't nothing but pussy. I said, she ain't doing nothing but a pelvic thrust. She was upside down on the chair looking like a sick dog. I said, what? You, you ever seen a cat when it ate up too much hair or yawn and they about to choke? She was coughing it up. I said, Lord, I pray she get it out of her throat. She must, she must got a thyroid condition. The girl was twerking. And you know when you my size and you trying to twerk from the side, you look like a flip phone. I said, why that bitch look like somebody dialing on a Nokia? She was twerking. That's not, that ain't for you. What, whatever happened to the creep? You know, the oh, uh, oh. Ain't no wrong with the butterfly. I would have still been like, go glow. Go glow. She threw me off. Because Glorilla is one of them girls. I love her music. I love Memphis in general, so I'm a huge Glorilla fan. And I got on my playlist. She like, you know what I'm saying? She got her own section now. But here's the thing about it. When I saw her, the name, her real name is Gloria. So it didn't match the frame. The name didn't match the body. The voice didn't match the body. Then the twerk moves and go. Uh, 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 um, um. Big shots to Glow. I really think she deserved that female hip hop award this year. Now, Lotto won. I like Lotto as well. Um, but a lot of the newer female rappers, I listen to a lot of their music, and this is no dig at them. So I'll be trying to listen to who sounds different, and I go for difference. So Glorilla brings a different cadence and, you know, performance to rap. So I was hoping that she won, but I was excited that Lotto won. Um, her, her, even her acceptance speech. This is one thing I noticed about award shows. You remember at one time, you only could th thank three people. And then you thank the fans for the music. And then you walk the fuck off. This is how an award acceptance speech used to go. You'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe I won. To everyone else in the category, this is all of ours, but I'm taking it home. Then you'll say, I want to thank God first, my Lord and Savior, because without him, none of this would be possible. I want to thank my mama, who at home watching right now, and my daddy, my siblings. I want to thank the fans, because without y'all, I'm going to be nothing. Today, you can thank a boyfriend that ain't your husband. That girl got up there and started showing us what her and her man do. I said, what's going on for an acceptance speech? I said, yeah, yeah, you know, what y'all do in the bedroom ain't got nothing to do with your lyrics do it. She have thought, thank her hairstylist to the best lace front land bitch in the world. She tacked my hair. She didn't thank the people who put her lashes on. The girl to thank somebody else who didn't even, won't even nominate. I'm going to thank the other rappers. I said, how long? They gave y'all a long thinking list in 2023. When we used to grow up watching an award show, you only had one minute to get up there and do what you needed to do and go and get your ass off stage so somebody else can come on. This award show, they gave them all what they wanted. I, I don't never remember nobody up there being able to thank the whole executive producer. You couldn't thank your makeup artist. They would cut the mic on you. They'd be like, hey, we're going to commercial right when you up there thinking. They let the girl thank it. I said, well, nah, thank you for that. And I love Big Lotto. Big chances, I mean, big shout outs to her for winning and all the winners and nominees. I really feel like if for BET to notice you at all, you're a winner at all. So that was great. Um, one of my favorite highlights of last night was watching the Migos come together. Because we have seen for years, it seemed like Offset and Quavo had had some type of tension. But I think sometimes the death of one of your partners can really bring people together. Because sometimes death is either going to tear you apart or bring you together. In this case, I'm glad it brought them together. It was good to see them out there. Now, let's talk about what Offset was wearing. You, you know, I, I was glad to see y'all performing. But it's hard to perform in leather. It is. And it's even harder to perform in leather in the middle of June. It's the middle of June in L.A. I know it was a cute 88 degree days. He out there with patent leather on, looking like that last rotisserie chicken you get from Sam's Club. You know the one with the bag be all steamed up? I know his britches was stained. And he up there trying to move around like you don't need to move around. And here's the thing about men. We always like to get on women about hygiene, right? Yeah, you know she was twerking so much she smelled for... Men, it's a thing called balls. Balls and leather in 80 degrees weather don't go to fuck together. That, that's all I got to say about that. I know them balls probably felt like, you know, Alka-Seltzer when you went home and took a bath. I know that water was sizzling. <laughs> just probably had to peel the shit off the pants. That's just, next time wear jeans. Jeans ain't never went wrong at the BET Awards. 
I think a lot of times we be so hooked on looking different that we get out there sometime and you go back to look at yourself 10 years from now and you can't even stand your old pictures. But here's the thing about social media, especially you got a Facebook or Instagram, they're going to remind you of what you looked like 10 years ago and you're going to be 40. You will look back 10 years ago when you was 32 at the BET Awards in 82 degrees weather with your balls in the front of some leather. Just don't go together. Moving right along, a um, few other people had some shit going on. And we talked about Ice Spice earlier. Let's get on a city girl. And this time we are not talking about Carisha, not the one who date Diddy. We're talking about JT, the one who date Lil Uzi. Now, this <laughs> First and foremost, women, I'm going to start off by this. I am never going to get out in public and embarrass myself because someone else is trying to embarrass me, especially behind a man, right? And then, too, when I saw the man that she was upset with, I had to go and look at Uzi pictures. I was like, you know, it ain't, he ain't no Tyson Bedford. You know what I'm saying? He ain't no Stallion. He ain't no TDH, no tall, dark, and handsome. This is a man that's wearing kilts and ain't never been to Ireland. He had on a kilt last night, spiked hair with a nose ring, a tongue ring, and a tattoo on the side of his face. He should be fighting for me. The girl got up and threw her cell phone. Now, here's the thing about being a celebrity. I don't never want to get up and throw something so endeared to me that you would be able to take down everything that I got in my phone and leak it on social media. I'm not going to throw my phone. Whatever happened to throwing a shit? Throwing a mic. Hell, throw your BET award at his ass. She got up and threw her phone. Now, people say, now, I'm not, I wasn't there. If y'all see, I was in Baltimore this weekend. I would have went to the award show, but I wasn't there. But people were saying it was because her boyfriend was looking at the rapper Ice Spice. And they took a selfie there, and he got up there and thanked Ice Spice and didn't thank his girlfriend. I said, yeah, I probably would have been upset too. But some shit in the audience I refused to do. She got up there and threw her phone. You should have threw your shoe. I'm not going to throw shit. Down. I don't know if y'all know this about me, but I, I, I can imagine that every celebrity is kind of like me of some sort. You got shit in your phone. You don't even want your mama to see, let alone your friends. So I'm not going to throw it in a place where everybody can. It's fans at the BET Award. It, I'm just saying, as a person from the outside of looking in, if I would have saw JT throw a phone, I would have pocketed her phone. Do you know how much dirt you can find on somebody with their phone? Never throw your phone. There are other things to throw. You can throw the microphone. You can throw your shoe. You can throw his phone. Hell, you could have threw ice spice at his ass. It was really her you was mad with. Why didn't you pick little Annie up and toss him at you? I said, what's going on? They didn't even go to commercial. They let us see the riffraff. It used to be a time at an award show where they didn't show you the underlying bullshit. You know, we would have never been able to see Will Smith get up and hit Chris Rock. 10, 20 years ago because they wouldn't have showed it to us live. Now, they show us everything that's going on while it's going on. So they actually had that on. I said, is somebody throwing a phone? And it looked like one of the newer iPhones too. I said, no, this ain't even an Android. She threw a new one. Okay. <laughs> you do whatever you want. Um, I think she got her phone back. She did have sense enough to after she threw it to ask for it back. And here's the thing about throwing something at someone. If you ain't throwing them no ass, you can't never ask for it back. When a person throws something at me, I feel like it's mine now. So if you throw your cell phone at Darren Fleet and I so happen to catch it, and you think you're going to ask for it back and I give it to you, <laughs> go to commercial. That'll never happen, sweetie. Once you give it to me, it is a gift. <laughs> it's a gift. Moving right along. I can't believe we stayed on that so long. There was a few other parts of the show that I really like. I love the Jamaican reggae dance group. I don't know about y'all, but I got up and I was one. And this little ass up in it. Neither am I, y'all. This little ass was tired because I just drove back from Baltimore. But I got up and I did a mean old dutty one. But what struck me was it was this old reggae hall queen there named Patra. Now, I'm a 90s baby. Um, so I remember a romantic call. You remember? Patra was the first chick we had ever seen twerking on the back of a bike. She had a hit with yo-yo. Patra got up there. And maybe it's because of the age group I'm in. But I don't feel like the people was giving Patra her due diligence. They wasn't giving her the flowers she deserved. And that's why I felt like I couldn't have been at the war show last night. Because I'm a person, when it's somebody I ain't seen since I grew up, oh, I'm going to make the whole crowd. Patra got up there with romantic call. I swear I would have been in the aisle twisting and in twirl. You won't give it up for Patra the same way you gave it up for Spice. And what you need to realize in life is before there was Rihanna or Spice, there was Patra. 
So I didn't understand where y'all were coming from. Y'all were too quiet for me. That girl was out there throwing her little help pelvic bones. I said, yes, Pat. Patrick had it on fire, but the whole Jamaican routine was nice. The whole reggae routine, even down to, you know, the African music, the Afro beats like Burner. And it was love. I love that. I love that part of the show last night. I love the part when the 90s singers and rappers came back out. I even like what a little girl name is, Dochi. Oh, what it is, huh? Oh, what's up? You know, the, every little girl want a little th Y'all don't know the music like I used to. But when they actually had Trillville come up there and that real beat drop, you know where it sounded like somebody was on the bed mattress? Mm, 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 mm. I was like, oh, shit. And Bill came out. I was so excited to see people I grew up with. Some lyrics that we could understand. Because I don't understand a lot of the new music. I just sing it so people won't think I'm that old. I'll be like, damn, he in his mood. Like, damn. I'm, I don't know what Ice Spice be talking about no more than Glorilla. But I don't want people to not think I'm down for the culture when you know I am. <laughs> Moving right along. It was another few things that I enjoyed. Um, I enjoyed seeing a lot of comedians that start off as internet personalities myself. Um, I enjoyed seeing Jess Hilarious there last night. She looked absolutely stunning. Um, and I loved what she was doing on the red carpet. The red carpet to me was more entertaining sometimes than the award show. Let's get on Mama Patty. Um, Y'all gonna lay off Patty LaBelle out there. You really, really are. Patty LaBelle is almost an 80 year old woman. She can, she, she, she can get up there and not read the teleprompter. Some of us can't read and we only in our shirty. So I know you're going to take it easy on Mama Patty. Patty got up there and did a Tina tribute and forgot the words. And then, you know, I'm not going to lie. I wish Patty would have done a song that she knew by Tina. You know, it just... Or did a song, damn, that we knew. We all know what's love got to do with it. If they ask me right now to do a Tina Turner tribute, I'm going to automatically go with, When I was a little girl, I had a rag doll. You know the shit. I said, Patty, 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 why not do one that you know, Patricia? Patty got up there and did what she wanted y'all to know. And people were talking shit about Patty. That's how I know we live in a different world today than what we used to. When we was growing up, you couldn't say shit about Patty or Aretha. You didn't talk about the, the OJs or the Temptations or anybody from Moat. You didn't talk shit about Bette Midler. We live in a world today where somebody would be behind Bette Midler in traffic and blow the horn and be like, bitch, move out of my way. I'm like, do you know you just told Bette to move? Nigga, that's Bette. But they don't care no more. This is a new generation. So when Buster got up there and said, you know what? We need to start respecting the younger generation. But overall... The younger generation need to respect their elders. It ain't no respect no more in the world. I don't give a damn if Patty would have got up there and mumbled through the song. She would only did what all 10 of the other rappers who were there to feature the night did before her. What was the difference with what Patty LaBelle did and what the fuck Ice Spice did except Patty won't throw in that ass in a circle? They did the same damn performance to me. A mumble is a mumble shit. Y'all like mumble rap? Here's mumble R&B. I thought Patty did a spectacular job. Patty got my fucking vote. Patty can make a recipe. Patty ain't got time to be up here learning Tina Turner songs for you. She only had two weeks to practice that she did not know Tina was going to kick the bucket before the BET Awards. Patty had all plans on just bringing y'all a new recipe to commercial. Patty's going to show you Patty LaBelle's dumpling, chickens, and waffle. Y'all got up there singing to the oldies of Tina Turner. You should have got somebody else to do. Patty, if get somebody else to do it was a person, I swear to God, Patty would have been that last night. Patty didn't even give a damn that she messed up. Did you see it when she messed it up? She was like, I don't know, I'll hell with it. And walked off. Because what Patty basically was saying at 80, I'd like to see you do better. Patty got up there and did her big one. I'm proud of Patty. Um, what else went on at the award show? It was so much. We covered Migos. We covered the Mumble Raps. We covered Buster. We covered Patty. We covered the cell phone. It was something else that happened that I would just... Re it was something else that happened. I was like, now why is this happening? What's going on here? And it wasn't an outfit because the outfits were already bought to you by Shen and, and returned to senders by Tamu. It was something else that happened there last night that stunned me. Beyonce. That's it. Beyonce wasn't even at the award show and people were talking shit about it. How many years are we going to let Beyonce keep getting nominated and not showing up? Beyonce is on tour, people. Beyonce got other shit to do. 
than accept another BET award or two. The woman only came to the BET award since she was 15. She done opened up at that award show three times. What else do you want to see the girl do? Beyonce don't never come up and they stay nominated. Here's the thing about nominating people for awards. We do not nominate you for awards in hopes that you show up. You're supposed to nominate them according to what they put out this year. I don't know about y'all, but it's almost hard to go anywhere without hearing Beyonce's song, Cuff It. Hell, the other day, I saw somebody getting arrested while I was on my way into TJ Maxx. Don't worry about what I was going there for. I was on my way to TJ Maxx. And damn it, Cuff It was playing. I said, this is the right song to go along with the theme. The cop, the cop had him on the hood of the car. Beyonce Cuff It was playing. I was like, she even knows when to pop up. That's how I know Beyonce is not human. The woman is an alien. She can just travel through time. I said, Beyonce not there. But at, at the end of the day, was you looking for Beyonce to be there? This is a 40-year-old woman who got her own kids. She didn't want to see other kids playing on stage. You got Ice Spice up there bent over, Glorilla bent over. Out of the, the out of the ten out of eleven female rappers that were there to perform last night, they all did the same twerk. I don't blame Beyonce. I'm not sitting through the same performance three different times. Y'all wasting that woman's time. This is a billionaire woman now. She she mailed you her DVD. That's it. But the award speeches were so damn long. I don't even think Beyonce would have wanted to sit through that. I didn't want to sit through it. They got to the point where they would let you do whatever you want to do while accepting an award. Tiana Taylor mama got up there and accepted the award on her daughter's behalf and then FaceTimed her damn daughter. Not only did she FaceTime her daughter, that ain't the part that behooved me. What behooved me was when the daughter got on the FaceTime and Tiana finally showed her face. While wasting our damn time, she still didn't understand what the hell was going on. Tiana was like, what am I looking at here? I said, you know good and damn well you was nominated for a BET award. She plays the damn video on Tiana was like, oh, I won. Uh, then got herself up to take the speech. I said, what's going on here? This shit would have never happened when Monique was hosting the awards. That's why we need to go back to when it was Cedric the Tainer and, and Steve Harvey or let Monique do it. Before we all decided we were going to counsel Monique, we should have all touched and agreed. Who the fuck else going to host BET? Monique will come out there and take the microphone from you. Just give me the mic, sugar. Monique gave you rules of what the hell you could and couldn't do before you had to get out here and do your performance or two. Monique said, if you are the only one nominated for the war in advance that you win, you're the only one that needs to get up in a set. Why I saw people, aunties on stage, their cousins, their first grade babysitters and teachers. I said, this is too many people. One person got up there and accepted one award with 20 people. I said, man, come on, come on, come on now. Come on now. Y'all could have took a picture of this. They up there just doing what they want to do. But I will say this much. I am glad that Tyler Perry is now the owner of BET. Because now we might not have to watch Baby Boy after the award show. I'm so sick of Baby Boy shit. I feel like I fucked Jody. Secondly, I knew that Tyler Perry on BET because every commercial that they played in between at the BET Awards was a Tyler Perry production. They had Tyler selling Nissans. They had Tyler at Ballpark. Tyler is the new Michael Jordan, whether we like it or not. Tyler wins. When the awards show go off, just to top it off, they play Medea Gets a New Hairdo. I said, I didn't even know this was a movie because you know Medea can get everything except a man. Medea get a job. Medea go to jail. Medea get her new iPhone 16. Medea was on the TV screen. When Medea Gets a Man went off, they played Medea Go to Jail. When Medea Go to Jail, they played Medea Family Reunion. I went to sleep to Tyler and I woke up to Brown. I said, yeah, it's going down. What the girl say? My coochie pink? My booty hoe? Oh, what? Y'all know the music that they just let her. They even had her out there. That's who it was. I was forgetting. That girl got that outfit off to move. And I know because I, I've never shopped at to move. The girl had on a Tamuchi outfit, had a hair down in one middle, blonde on one side with the red, looking like a, a condiment packet. I said, hey, ketchup and mayo. Had on her little red outfit, singing her little frisky music. I said, how did this even, how did this even make it to, we would have never been able to grow up into a time where a girl was singing, it's pound town, just left pound town, my coochie pink, my booty. I said, what? Because I didn't understand what she had said. I was like, because I didn't know. I heard people saying it, but I thought it was just a TikTok. I didn't know it was a real person that made a song, and she was there last night in the thong. I said, you know, this is, this is just wrong. 
this is wrong. They needed to get Boosie a booster seat. He done stood up when they started playing his music. They I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D. I said, no, you need somebody else to depend. No, shit, you don't even need a depend. They should have put him in a seat belt. Boosie almost fell. You know you're too small to be crawling up on a BET award season. If you look in the theater, it's almost like a movie theater. So the seats let back up. Now, need I mind y'all, Boosie is a cute 4'8". He up there rocking out with the crowd. That seat folded his ass up. Boosie almost ate the ground. I said, you know what? Just left pound town. Look around because Boosie fell down. I said, it's just too much. It's too much. But I ain't going to lie. I miss this year. I'm going next year. I ain't been since 2018. I'm going next year because this year, y'all had me on my feet in here. I love the R&B. I love the gospel break. I love the... My favorite part was the Caribbean part from the islands, from the Trinidad to Jamaica to Africa. And they had a few people uh, representing different countries of Africa from South Africa, Johannesburg, all the way to Nigeria. I mean, it was just a lot of love. And I was so happy to see that many brown people in the building from different cultures because it is a lot of us. And when you get to see that on one network, that is what it was really about. So I was happy to see all people that kind of look like me getting along. I was like, yes, look at this big old cookout. And that's what it reminded me of, a summertime cookout. So I did love that. But other than that, your outfits, yeah, they screamed Shein. Yeah, there was, there was some shiny outfits in there tonight. Um, other than that, we talked about JT fighting, Boosie falling, uh, gospel break, uh, Beyonce not showing up. People that won't even nominate it that did show up. I'm like, why, why was some of you there? Some of you, come on now, go, go back to work so that you can be there for a purpose next year. And then some of you was on the red carpet a little too long, has sweated out your lace front. I saw a lace front, you know, speaking. It looked like it had one of the microphones from the Tyler Perry plays underneath it. I said, oh, her lace ain't secure. <laughs> Good thing she ain't performing. <laughs> Might have to catch it. But nonetheless, I enjoyed it. It was an amazing show. Um, it was good, like I said, just to see a lot of people from different walks of life coming together for one thing. It was just a form of entertainment. I'm an entertainer, so I love entertainment. Um, and I was busy entertaining this weekend myself. Baltimore, y'all were amazing this weekend. Thank y'all for the way y'all treated me, my family, my friends. Somebody said, what about Remy? Remy looked the fuck good. That's how I like to see my female rappers looking. You know how like when Eve show up, when Missy shows up, when Remy, you know, when rappers actually could rap about something and they won't talking about what color they booty hole was and all of this. I was like, what, what, is, what is rap is this? What is this? Then what in the gynecologist is going on here? What in the I need a pet smear, colostomy is going on here, colonoscopy? I was like, well, how you know that unless you went to go get a colonoscopy? Because who watching they self wipe their ass today? Who watching that? Unless you'd have made a flick and went back to watch you. I just don't know why you know. Whatever. Do what you want. <laughs> this new generation, baby, will send you to hell and I'm not going. I'm not going with you. Um, Trina looked good. It's Trina with child. So I saw her. She looked really well last night. Um, I love the fact that Buster Rhymes said the people he started with is the people he ended with. That was loving. Um, I saw Summer Walker there with her boyfriend and they just Looking like Marticia and Mr. McAdams. I said, I said, girl, it ain't even a Wednesday. No pun intended. <laughs> but you could have stayed home with pugs. I didn't know. I didn't. I said, Summer looked like she's coming to put a spell on somebody. But I love her music. Remy, like I said, looked one of the best last night. Um, Summer also looked good, though. She always looked so wicked. Summer. <laughs> You, you, look, you, you look a little scary. But I was excited to see everybody. And like I said, I love the performances. Um, and, I, and I had my favorite moments of there. My ultimate favorite moment was Busta Rhymes' speech, though. Um, other than Quavo and Offset getting together for the Migos reunion collaboration, I thought that was lovely. But Busta, what he said about let's stop beefing with one another, let's stop talking down on each other, let's build each other up. Also, the people that you see start with, you want to carry them into where you're going, and also meeting people full circle. You cannot do this without someone, so what he was saying really resonated in my spirit and made me think about the people I work with, like Woo Woo, who's been touring me for the last four years, or my homie Jay, or my cousin, um, hell, even my dog Coach, just like the things and the, the stuff that makes you you, so that you can be the best you to give to people, that was important, and he gave that message, and I received that, I was so glad to receive, I wish I was there to receive it last night, I will be there next year, but thank you. Buster for that. 
Um, and everybody who performed, it was just really, really good. Really, really good energy. I performed myself this weekend, but like I said, I was in Baltimore. Baltimore, thank y'all for showing up and showing out, buying merch, loving Coach, loving me, my family, my friends. My fans were absolutely beautiful. I'm doing it all over again tomorrow in Pleasanton, California, live at Tommy T's. Pleasanton, it will be pleasant to see the Bay Area there. I'm talking Oakland, San Francisco, all the surrounding cities. Want to see you live at Tommy T's. Dressed in your best, I will have merch, and me and Woo Woo are definitely going to work. Uh, make sure you buy a shirt. Um, support, the, support the comics. Now, we be out here working hard, and I cannot wait to see y'all tomorrow. Also, July the 12th, I am in New Brunswick, New Jersey, live at Stress Factory. That's right, New Brunswick, New Jersey, live at Stress Factory, July the 12th. July the 14th, I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas, live at the Nut House. July the 16th, I'm in Washington, D.C., live at D.C. Comedy Law. July the 20th, I'm in Chicago, Illinois, live at the Chicago, Illinois Comedy Bar. July the 26th, I'm in Bridgeport, Connecticut, live at Stress Factory. August the 3rd, I'm in New York City, live in Harlem at this place called Comedy in Harlem. August the 13th, I'm in Dallas, Texas. I was about to say Hyenas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, live at Hyenas. So I cannot wait to see y'all. I'm going to share that calendar up and down the timeline. Thank y'all for watching Fleet Hive, my BET recap. God bless you all, and thank you for watching again. Bye.